Now let's explore the medial surface of the human brain using a specimen that's been cut right down the midline in the mid-sagittal plane. To reorient you to this view of the brain, let's again identify the embryological divisions that are visible in this view of the brain. Most of the cerebral cortex that we see, as well as now the cut interior surface of the forebrain, is derived from the prosencephalon. The cerebral cortex is telencephalon, and then now what we can see here is the diencephalon, being comprised of a region called the thalamus, and then just below, the hypothalamus. Together, the diencephalon and the telencephalon are what have become of that first anterior bulge of that developing neural tube that we call the forebrain. From about this location on back, this is what we call the hindbrain, and that includes much of the brainstem and the cerebellum. Between the hindbrain and the forebrain is a small division of the developing neural tube that became a brain region called the middle brain or the mesencephalon, and that's what we see right here. So we have forebrain, middle brain, and then the hindbrain, which in this view we can recognize as the pons and cerebellum together forming the metencephalon, and then down below is the medulla oblongata, or the myelencephalon. Now let's look again at the forebrain and talk about the gyral structures that we can see in this view of the telencephalon. So just on top of the diencephalon is this broad band of white matter called the corpus callosum. And that is a very obvious visual feature that helps define the contour of this medial set of gyri that sit above it. Right above the corpus callosum is a long gyrus called the cingulate gyrus. And this gyrus has many divisions that we could identify, but we'll keep it simple and just call this the cingulate gyrus. Just above the cingulate gyrus is a sulcus called the cingulate sulcus. And then superior to the cingulate sulcus is the superior frontal gyrus that forms the dorsal margin of the frontal lobe. The superior frontal gyrus extends back towards this region around the medial terminus of the central sulcus called the paracentral lobule. The paracentral lobule is bounded below by the cingulate sulcus and then posteriorly by the marginal branch of the cingulate sulcus. So this then is the paracentral lobule around the termination of the central sulcus. So just posterior to that central sulcus then is the parietal lobe and just behind the marginal branch of the cingulate sulcus is a gyral structure called the precuneus. The precuneus is the boundary of the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe. Between those two lobes is a long, straight sulcus that runs from the inferior surface of the hemisphere all the way up to the dorsal midline. This sulcus is called the parieto-occipital sulcus and it's the posterior boundary of the precuneus. Now running in most brains almost at a right angle to this parieto-occipital sulcus is the calcarine sulcus. And the calcarine sulcus is present right here. The calcarine sulcus is an important landmark that identifies the location of the visual parts of the brain on the medial surface of the occipital lobe. Down below the, the calcarine sulcus is the lingual gyrus, and above the lingual gyrus is the cuneus. The lingual gyrus forms something like a tongue on the bottom of the occipital lobe, and lingual means tongue. Just above that calcarine sulcus and behind the parieto-occipital sulcus is this wedge shape that we call the cuneus, and cuneus is a word that means wedge. So we have the tongue, the wedge above the tongue, and then the gyral formation, again, just in front of the wedge is called the precuneus, or the structure in front of the wedge. 
We'll come back and talk more about the structures that are visible here in the brain stem in another lab lesson. But for now, again, just to quickly review, we have the forebrain, including the telencephalon and the diencephalon, the midbrain or the mesencephalon, and then below the middle brain is the rest of the brain stem, including the pons, the cerebellum, and the medulla oblongata.